Hello everyone. I hope everybody is well and the multiple chemical sensitivity community. I hope everybody's getting some good healing in, getting ready to go into 2022 with hopefully some positive vibes. Uh, just got the Zen cleanse done and just right now doing a little red light therapy. So I want to jump into some things. Um, it's some things that's really frustrating me right now. Um, and it mostly has to do with other multiple chemical sensitivity groups. Now, I can't tell them how to run their groups. I can't uh, give medical advice or tell them what to do. But I call them the let's, say, let's stay sick groups is what I call them. And I know there's people that's in different situations or worse than I am. I know all these factors, believe me. I've been at the bottom, you know. At one time, I was so chemically sensitive to walking in Food City, I couldn't even stand the off-gassing of the concrete. As a matter of fact, if you look behind me, the, the Clorox wipes that uh, my grandmother uses, they actually, it's got a plastic bag over it because I'm worried about any kind of smell uh, leaching out of them, and they, they haven't even been used in months. So I'm pretty severely uh, chemical sensitive, although I've improved. I went, you know, back from basically being almost housebound, bedbound, to now I'm about 35%. I can't go in a store for two or three hours with all these uh, different things that, that I've done and that I hope people at least gives it a try and talks with their functional medicine, environmental medicine doctor and and gets on that right track and ask these questions because a lot of them don't mention it because people's not willing to put in the work. They're not willing to, to do the right things to, to uh, improve. And uh, I feel like, and this is what frustrates me, and I'm gonna, I'm going to throw some, I really don't like to do it, but it's it's the admins on some of the other groups. I really hate to throw uh, names in there. I've left several uh, due to issues and due to things that they said. Just very poor excuses, uh, responses. I'm, I'm out here, I'm doing what nobody else is doing. I'm out here testing you know, mobile homes, I'm out here testing campers, why they didn't work for me. I'm doing a load of different detox regimens. I'm doing, you know, I'm putting it all on video for you guys to watch and go over and decide what you think will work for you, talk with your doctor, whatever. But that's that's beside the point. Let's let's get into the video. So one of the groups um, that I had an issue with was, I hate to say it, but there's one group called Mold, Avoid Mold Avoidance with Brian Rochner. Brian, if you're watching this video, I got a lot of respect for you, 100%. But I will tell you, you're wrong on some things, and what you're teaching is not 100% correct because... I'm living proof that all MCS is not due to mold illness. <laughs> uh, that's wrong. And everybody that buys that book and reads that book, they think that they they got this hypochondriatic obsession with avoiding mold. And, you know, one of the posts that I had a problem with is you said that Outdoor molds do not matter. That is bull crap. I will tell you that right now because I can take, at my worst, the couch cushion that had just a little bit of mold on it outside. I could take my feet and I could just barely touch it and I would break out. I, I'm severely allergic to the environment outside. I actually lived outside for about two and a half months of my journey, slept in the car at night, lived outside, and there is no mystery 
illness spots. It's either it's high mold or it's not. And it's usually around pine trees, which y'all don't have a lot of, so you wouldn't know anything about that. Uh, he said outdoor molds don't matter. That's that is bull because up here we got a lot of pine trees. They don't do nothing but stay wet. They stay moldy, and they're toxic to a lot of MCS people, moldy old people. I'll give you a little background, okay? I lived in a molded mobile home for 19 years. Perfectly, pretty much healthy, other than I was born with food allergies, etc., etc. The home didn't get moldy till about the last 10 years. I done perfectly fine in that home. We moved out and we moved in a new home, which is loaded with formaldehyde chemicals. And then I went to a manufacturer and got heavy metal poisoning. And that's when my mold illness started. So it's a multi-systematic disease. Uh, Yours might have been 100% due to mold. I'm not saying that. And there's other people on the uh, groups that, yeah, mold did cause theirs because it's microtoxin. It's, it's toxic. It's a it's a VOC, volatile organic compound. It goes hand in hand. It's, it goes hand in hand with chemicals, but it's not man made. It's natural. Its job is to, that microtoxin's job is to compete and to uh, run you out of your house. But here's what a lot of people don't understand. With outdoor molds, the same molds that cultures your attic or your living space or whatever comes from the outside. It didn't magically appear. So let's say you got a human attic and let's say those molds start growing. Let's say it comes in through a vent or whatever. And over time, the molds compete and the most aggressive or most toxic molds survive and that's what you're left with and that's how you end up with toxic mold in the house if the conditions is right to grow it but know that guess what it came from outside so the same stuff is outside is inside my mast cell doctor actually has a piece of paper and he's one of the best in the world he's a he's a doctor doctor he's not uh not running a bullcrap group uh on that piece of paper it says most mast cell patients flare up the most in a file because of mold dumps number two is it's talking about raking leaves keeping your windows down you know or keeping them up so yes outdoor molds do play a big part and every mcs person was not due to a mold illness mine was not due to a mold illness i had mold illness on top of my mcs my close friend uh i don't name names or nothing he has mcs but he does not have mold sensitivity so the answer to the question is no when you have a group that the only thing they teach is mold avoidance, it's a book of this, and they talk about ATC, it's a red flag right there, like, and in another post I seen, he had never been to, uh, East Coast, Virginia, and uh, you know, the outdoor molds didn't matter. Let me tell you something. I want, I want to tell you. Let me educate you. The mold is so bad up here outdoors, you can go three or four weeks without washing your car and you'll have mold growing on it. You leave your clothes outside, humidity is always 70 to 80%. Anything above 55 60% is mold growth. So yes, there's a lot of things I agree with you. I got a lot of respect for you. Don't take it the wrong way. But know that I've been around the block on this. Avoidance is half, but your other half is your treatments. 
but don't take it in a disrespectful way. It's not disrespectful, but I wanted to clear the air on that. And there was something else that he had mentioned in a video or something. I don't even remember what it was because it was it was so many different things. Um, I can't I can't remember but oh I know what it was so on the mold groups everybody's got so scared of mold and I get that you know if I go in a molded place I you know I have pressure wash my shoes I get it you know I've, I've had seizures from molds like you know I get I get you know the borders I'll trash my clothes three times but there's something I want to address. So some of these books has got people so mold scared that they won't even, you know, they take clothes off outside and everything, you know, just they're afraid of dragging that little bit of mold in and, and that's fine. Like my clothes, I never, re, you know, I never rewear my clothes. I always put it in a hamper. I don't put them outside or nothing because I wouldn't benefit because it'd be more mold on them. I can show you that on my t-shirts and stuff if I left them outside. For Virginia, it's different for the desert, of course, you know. But <laughs> they got people so mold scared. They got them taking their clothes off outside. Yet they go in Walmart or Food Line or whatever store. And they don't realize that the typical Walmart's 400 to 1,000 people going in there. And they've, they're living in everything from the biggest mansion that's spotless to the most molded trailer in the world that you can imagine. What do you think you're stirring up when you walk in those stores? What do you think you're getting on your clothes? I mean, is you got people so fixated on eliminating mold. And they say it's okay to grass, you know, they're saying it's okay, uh, the outdoor molds. But yet, they go in stores, and that's fine, you know. So, I like to teach practical avoidance. You know, it's, it's do what you got to do to get well. I don't know what you're going to do this person. But there is a common sense to things. Number two, the second group I want to go into. I've learned a lot of good things, but it's a little bit, there's some robot stuff going on. Uh, the Andy Cutler protocol, which I'm getting ready to give it a try, and I, and I don't knock stuff till I try it. So, <laughs> this is something that I really want to talk about. And I appreciate the admins helping me out. They haven't they haven't damned me too much yet, but I'm gonna lay I'm gonna lay, I'm gonna lay some common sense down. Okay. So in this group, basically what it is is you do you have all your feelings removed, you do DMSA, and you do ALA. And they all do different things. The ALA mostly focuses on mercury. Let's see how many minutes do I got on this video? I'm making it too long. Uh, but anyway, back the DMSA, the chelates, lead, arsenic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Basically, same stuff as EDTA. Saying EDTA is bad. EDTA saved a lot of lives for 20, 25 years, especially acute exposures. So that's the first thing I call a little bit bull crap on. But anyway, they say Corella's bad. Some of my biggest improvements I had was after starting Corella. Uh, may not work for some, that's fine. Okay. I'm not knocking the protocol. Save children's lives. That's that's great. But I will say this, this is a, this is a part that makes sense. So the group promotes removing all your feelings before 
you do any kind of DMSA or ALA, and the DMSA and ALA, ALA comes from the same company, and they're all they're tied in with the company and everything. So, you know, that's one red flag, you know, a little bit to me. Number two is a lot of the people that I talked to on that group, they're still very severely chemical sensitive. You know, I went from being bedridden to the programs I'm doing to, you know, being able to tolerate a store for two or three hours. That could change tomorrow. I know that. I'm not bragging. But, so, what kills him about the group is anything that's not on the protocol seems like it gets removed or disappears. You know, I'm not by the book person. Everybody's individualized. Okay? So, let's go back to the feeling thing. So, they're saying that you gotta have this one little tiny feeling removed or two, or you're gonna... You're going to mess up and you're going to just put yourself in a wheelchair. Let me, let me give you some logic here. I work for a manufacturing facility. I worked for them for roughly five years. I was around welding smoke, grinding. I was around plating. I was around acid baths, as a matter of fact, 41 different acids in open batter tanks. It ate holes in the concrete, the filing cabinets rusted. Uh, let's see what else. It ate metal grating into, we used zinc, aluminum alloy, burn, we used all kinds of nasty things. Cancer was very prevalent. So to get the MCS level, it was very difficult to get there. For other people, it may not be as difficult. So, with my heck, with my hair analysis test, it was pretty evident what caused, you know, most of the blunt of my chemical sensitivity. And uh, anyway, when I would grind, like after it was plated, if it would rust. We would grind the threads on the tie rods. And after we would do that, of course, you got sparks, you know, you got all that. And we would, you know, we would wear N95s. We, they give us N95s sometimes, not always, depending on how many they had. They had five or six in the whole factory in the little vending machines. It took them two hours to get the team leads. And I was the guy most of the time that, that tried to stay safe as much as I could. And I will honestly say that even though I wore that N95 and everything, the inside of my nose was black. That's a lot of metal you're breathing in. That's a lot of metal you're taking in your lungs. Have you seen a smoker's lungs? I never smoked a day in my life. You know? Think about somebody that's worked uh, in a lead mine. I, where my grandmother's house is, it's about... Mm, roughly about four miles from uh, one of the largest lead mines in southwest Virginia. Those guys never wore a mask, nothing. If they did, it was paper mask or whatever. They sucked in lead for years and years. And that's why a lot of them died young. Not good. A lot of them got cancer. Others, they live 60, 70 because their body detoxes correctly. It's, it is genetic predisposal that comes in hand. I so happen to have a lot of, you know, in part, I got the MTHRF or whatever. I got two detox impurities, which is not really that significant because 60% of people has it, but some people has it worse than others. I got the 677 and, and the 1298. But back to the point. So when we was grinding on these uh, threads, we was breathing in all this stuff off the plating. Everything that was, if the plating was bad, we had to grind it off and then replate it. 41 different chemicals that 
that it went through. Very common we done this. The coolants was so bad. There was one gentleman, he got on his boots and ate holes through his boots. And I empty those hoppers when I run tow motor every day. I got splash in the face and everything. And I was very tolerant to all that stuff until over time I got more and more sensitive as it built up. My, my toxic burden went up and that's when I started coughing up blood and hair loss and all those other things. So, you know, I developed those intolerances from being a high toxic load. That's what I'm getting at. Is my body was able to deal with it, but when I started filling up with it, my body was not able to deal with it anymore. So that's another point for Brian is, no, it don't all come from mold. And yes, mold does impair your ability to detox, but I got the sickest when I was in a clean home environment so I know it wasn't mold driving this. But anyway, uh, yeah, I got the mold sensitivity, but let's go back to factory work. A lot of people's never done it. So there's a lot of oxidiz oxidation, you know, like I said, the filing cabinets and everything rust. But the gentleman, he got exposed to cool and ate his toenails off. Like I said, I was getting some splash of this stuff every day as I emptied uh, the chip hoppers around the tow motor. I was a rust inhibitor. You've seen in my other videos that eat the skin off my forearms. So it took a heck of a whole lot for me to get sick. And the only PPE that we had was we had these little sleeves. And what would happen is cooling, of course, would run underneath that. And the N95s, they didn't catch nothing because it was mostly vapors in the air. <laughs> you know, so you can ask any grinder or any welder. Most of the time, they, they got a whole nose full of metal that they're breathing in. It, it could be lead. It could be it could be anything. You know, it could be... It's, it's hard to tell, you know. So, my problem with the Andy Cutler protocol is although it may be smart to remove that feeling, why would you remove 0.3 or 4 micrograms of metal to, for somebody that had to get poisoned so bad, like myself, I was breathing that in daily, and I don't know how much the the feeling puts off or whatever <laughs> over a long period of time, but I don't see leaving one feeling, maybe two, doing any uh, damage or harm, but I'm not a doctor, it's not medical advice. So I have a real issue with some of the things they say, and I'm going to give it a try, and I'll tell you whether it's, it's bull crap. And everybody on that site, it don't matter what their hair analysis looks like, they say, it's mercury intox, it's mercury intox, it's mercury intox, it's mercury intox. But yet, I can get on there and say, I was, I know for a fact I was poisoned with these 15 metals. I don't remember a mercury exposure. I don't recall even being around mercury. But yeah, it's still, yeah, it's mercury intox. Everything's mercury intox. It's like a robot group. So that's that's two groups we've talked about. We talked about mold avoidance. Some good stuff there. Not knocking what they're doing if it works for them. I might have to go to the desert myself. I might have to eat my words. But I do know outdoor molds affect you. And it's very high in Virginia. I can show you pictures and I can show you how fast it grows and I can show you the humidity. Number two, we talked about the Andy Cutler protocol, which I'm getting ready to try. Some of it I don't agree with. And you can see why I don't agree with. Uh, another good example of that is coal mines, black lungs, 
you look how much metals and stuff they was ingesting before they got sick like I did and what I worked in and they're telling you that it's the most dangerous thing to leave a feeling in like I said I'm not a doctor but something sounds shady and they always like buy that book but they can't they can't tell you why and everything that man put in that book uh, they treat it like it's Jesus Christ himself wrote it. So how many minutes on the video? Because it's getting long. 25. Okay. Number three. The group I want to talk about. Oh. Yeah, let's go to three. Because I'm making this too long. MCS slash Tilt Survivors. I received a message the other day. I've done a lot of work on these videos, trying to put good information out, designing housing. Like I said, felt home. I completely got it. Completely get the mold thing. I completely get the chemical sensitivity. I put videos of my face swelling up and everything going down a turgeon aisle. My face swelling up and new campers, everything. Nobody else has done that to prove anything. I put pictures of cobbling up blood and all this other stuff. So I received a private message, and she, she was nice, I will say that, but I don't call them progress people. I like moving forward. If, if I'm going to survive this, I'm going to try to survive it. I'm, I might kill over tomorrow from too much detox, but or a bad exposure or whatever. I don't have the answers for everything, but back to the point, I received a message from her, uh, Miss Summers, and I, I respect her being nice, that my, that they really didn't want my content there and that they did respect it but it was not study based and it was not scientific based it was just all diy stuff and you know it didn't follow under their guidelines and stuff and i'm gonna tell you right now <laughs> you got so many that's relying on them i hate, I hate these customers relying on them damn studies and that and that bullshit let me tell you something. The same people that make those studies, the CDC and the whatever, the FDA, they're the same ones that's approving the toxic chemicals. Okay, they're the same ones. And if it's an independent group that's doing work outside of that, they don't have the money and they can put it in front of Congress and the government and it don't go no damn where. Okay? So if you're waiting on them studies to save you, you're waiting for something that's never probably going to happen, not in our lifetime, because they've knew for the last 50 years they've been destroying the planet. Take this for example. So, they knew asbestos was bad 20, 30 years before they outlawed it. There was people getting asbestosis and everything else. They caught it the mystery fiber that was killing people over in the factory. They knew when it came out and it got approved. They, they called it the magic material, the safe material. And they let this go on for 30 and 40 years, okay? And you think that that same group and even doctors was promoting cigarettes for better breathing and stress relief? You know why? Because they get paid. I had a doctor that got me on Bastolic for hypertension when I was 18. And every, everybody come in there, the, the cure was Bastolic. All Bastolic does this, Bastolic. They get, a lot of them gets money to promote new medicines and stuff. And they look at the studies and they make judgment calls. And, you know, they got their standpoint. And we had to go by the book. I'm a former lab technician, so I know all about it. 
but I will say this much. Is what really grinds my gears is, you know, like Trudy's day, which I don't I don't call it Trudy no more because you know, I, she was spreading a lot of bull crap too, because she was knocking stuff before trying it and she was going by studies that like I said, the same people is promoting this stuff. But anyway, back to the guidelines and stuff, you know, they knew sugar was bad, they proved it. And they're waiting, and in her day it was Parkinsona or whatever. So they knew about this a hundred years ago. They knew about black lung, and they knew about all this uh, with the coal miners, people dropping over dead. Panama Canal, when it was using uh, the blasters and stuff, people were dropping over dead and 20, 30 years old, 40 years old. Like, you know, like the factory I worked at, heart attack, strokes, steel workers, uh, you know. I love working with steel, believe me, I'd be right back in there, but I didn't know it was killing me. But you got little Jim Bob and Billy Bob, they drove the same truck around, they wore the same jeans for seven years, and they clean out attics full of mold, and they get houses, and the only thing they've ever used is tide, and they never get sick from mold or whatever, because their detox system is great, their genetics is just... It's kind of like bodybuilding, you know, some people detox better than others. A lot of us, we don't take trash out, but back to the point. So I got a message from Miss Summers and she was telling me about that my topics was not scientific based and um, she was nice about it, so I got a lot of respect. And not a saying it disrespectful way, but some of these people they sit back and they wait year after year for something to change. And if you notice every time it's a new name, okay, it went from Parkinson, then it went to environmental illness. This was before my time. And Trudy taught me about this. And then it went from that to I believe it was then they called it multiple chemical sensitivity for the last twenty five years. Well, before that, it was well documented in uh, Gulf War Syndrome, which is a lot of the same thing. Oxidative stress. Sorry about that chair. It squeaks like crazy. So they got plenty of information. They know what causes it. Over toxic load. It's a toxic burden, whether it be heavy metals, mold, co-infections, limes, whatever. So we know what causes it. It ain't no secret. There's nothing else to learn about it, but finding what what helps you get out of the hole and this is what this channel is about is is i'm trying things to for you to try to maybe get you out of the hole to talk to your doctor about okay they they accused me of helping sell uh zen cleanse and other things uh, that's a pile of crap because I don't have no referral link and all that's I don't have none of that You got to have a referral link for me to make even may even make any money So That really grinded my gears is what the hell's the study gonna do now they're calling it tilt Because it's basically describing the same thing you, you feeling up you hit a tilt point and then Then your body crashes your adrenals and everything then you get severe sensitivities like 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 I did what else is it to learn about it? Let's, let's talk about treatments. Let's talk about, you know, the, the other group. I got flagged for uh, posting YouTube videos, and they said, we don't want you putting YouTube videos up because people got EMS sensitivity. Don't watch them, you know, if, if it's that bad. But yet, they will let people go on there talk about horoscopes. They'll let people talk about uh, the the neighbor's laundry bothering them, and there's not a damn thing nobody can do about any of that shit. The only thing you can do is treatment to build your tolerances up. If anything works for you, and that's what I'm trying to find, is things that works. They will sit on there and they'll respond to 75 comments about uh. uh about the laundry detergent fussed about the neighbors or whatever or this or that 
but it don't offer solutions. I mean, that, that wastes the person's time, it wastes the other person's time, and it's, it's, you know, the fixes is obvious. Everybody's got a rant and stuff, but, you know, get you a hip air purifier, move. You know, there's not a lot of options for us, you know. I've, I've had to move out of a home. I've had to move out of my parents' home. I've had to live in my car. You know, I had to move out of a camp. You know, everything. I, you know, I've done I've done all that stuff. So I know, I get it. But, so their EMF and their cognition so bad, they can't pay attention to a 25 or 30 minute informative video that covers what I'm doing that's helping me. And people knows that what I'm doing, I've improved. I can change it more. I'm not the smartest man in the world. But yet they can put a post on there. I can post three or four times a day. All my neighbor uses laundry detergent and it, it upsets me, you know. I've been there. I've been in a laundry mat and I about I about had a full blown seizure, my hands drawed up. <laughs> you know, I know what they go through. You know, I recorded some of these things, you know. It's, you know, it, it's so counterproductive when, you know, they, like I said, they can get on there and they respond to 75 comments all day long complaining about it. But yet they can't watch a video to help with solutions. And I, I see the same comments and the same questions time after time. Uh, a lot of the flags, that's the doorbell going up. A lot of the flags that I received was on, wanting to start a uh, safety group. Or not a safety group, but a like a community group, and that was really sad to me. That's when I got a, a message from Miss Summers. Is is I got a message uh, that we need to do through Zoom call and this and that. We need to unite. We need to work together to find out what works. You know, waiting on the government to do something or whatever. They're not going to help 7,500 people, you know, uh, that's got this condition or 30,000 or whatever. We had to unite. We had to find out what works, what helps. We had to figure out the housing solutions. If not, if we don't work together and start getting together. It's going to be the same thing in 50 years. And it's going to be the same measurable people. I'm going to wrap this video up because it's getting long. And I think everybody's got the idea. Adios to the groups. They don't want the good stuff out there and wants to sell shit and uh, they let people get on there and promote uh, the things that, you know, referral links and all this other crap and all that. You won't find it here. I might write a book, but that's it.